Well, hi there everyone, Jeff here again from Picture Time, and today I've got another install slash product review video for you. I know we've been away for a while, but back in July, my wife and I sold our minivan and got this 2016 Toyota Highlander Hybrid Limited. It's a great car, we are enjoying it, but one of the major problems with it, if you've got a used Highlander prior to 2020, is the stereo system. Now this might be a first world problem. This car does have the JBL system in it, but man, we've had so many issues with connectivity with our phones and you know, I call my wife from home and I can't hear because the volume changes and it's just a really big pain, honestly. And uh, we've gotten so used to the Apple CarPlay system in our 4Runner that we decided to try and find a replacement system for this. So I did some research and on Amazon, I found this company called Vibex who makes a 10.2 inch touchscreen replacement system for this for under $500. And uh, I'm gonna attempt to do the installation myself. Now I've never done this before on this car and I've actually never tested it. And I wanted to tell you too that uh, I was not sent this uh, radio by anybody. Um, I, we paid for it uh, from our own money. And so this is an honest review uh, and maybe a solution for a 2014 to 2019 Toyota Highlander with the factory system, if you've been having some phone connectivity issues, this system is a, a capable of supporting wireless Apple CarPlay and corded uh, Android Auto. I did get a trim removal kit so I could get some of the trim and the air vents and stuff out so I could get at the old radio. And then also just a caveat too, Viabex is pretty impressive already. After purchase, I got a direct message from the seller verifying the year, make and model and the version of the stereo uh, of our car. And then they sent me detailed instructions and some unique things that we need to do for our stereo based on having the JBL system and so on. So let's see how this install goes and then uh, we'll do a little review afterwards. The unit itself, very well packaged and actually came included with a glass screen protector. It came with the canvas wiring harness that was specific to our vehicle, as well as a few other plugs. Looks like there's a GPS antenna, a Wi-Fi antenna, and, and then an additional microphone. Let me show you a little bit what I've done now. I, I took the Viabex unit out of the package and to the best of my ability, based on the instructions, have tried to connect the cables that they've sent to me. I'll then go out and we'll show you how we remove the old system. Then we'll get it uh, all mapped up and connected and uh, put back together and then tested. This one wiring harness seems to plug right in here and then has the female RCA connections. There's also this plug right here. The instructions seem to show that this is for the backup video camera. So I've plugged that into this cable at the moment. There's actually two options. Once we get to the car, I'll verify that I have it connected to the right plug. It also shows that there's an auxiliary connection here, a male and female connection that connect from here to the auxiliary in. I've also got their additional GPS antenna installed. And then also from this wiring harness, there's an antenna in that I have plugged in, which I assume then will plug into the factory system and retain the factory FM radio antenna. Also right here, there's a little plug that, that is marked on the diagram for USB. And I'm also assuming that this plugs into a factory plug that will retain the factory USB ports in, in the car for charging and for um, playing music through the auxiliary cable. Okay, here goes nothing. I'm gonna try one of my little tools here and I'm gonna start removing this piece of trim from this side. I've seen uh, different people try and start it from here, but then you run into some issues with the cowl around the gauges. So I'm gonna start from here. This piece of trim needs to come out. This little piece of trim up top here needs to come out and then obviously the two vents. And then uh, we'll go to the garage here and grab a little socket sent there. There's four 10 millimeter little bolts that you'll need a little ratchet set with an extension on to get this off. So let's see what this takes to get these off. You wanna be careful not to force anything as you're removing this stuff. You don't wanna break any tabs. There we go, we got that off. And then there is, uh, two connectors back here, factory connectors that we're gonna pinch and remove. And then we're gonna set that aside. 
And then uh, we also want to uh, remove this trim right here. I was able to just get that just with my fingers. So that piece comes out and gets set aside. And then we've got to remove these vents. All right, I've got just a standard Craftsman ratchet set with a 10 millimeter socket on it. Just uh, take these four out. I'm gonna save those for later. Okay, the four 10 millimeter sockets are out. Then this likely should just pull straight out. It looks like there's some plugs from the bottom that we don't need to remove, but we wanna remove all the top ones. Okay, now the radio is free. And then we've got the factory plugs there that should mate up to the wiring harness that is connected to the Viabex unit. One tip too, we want to make sure and remove these little yellow tabs that are on the factory stereo. Those will transfer to the Viabex unit. Okay, I got the yellow clips installed. I got the wiring harness installed. And let's get ready to go out and uh, pop this in the car. I did install the uh, extra USB plug here in effort to maybe see if there's a way to uh, upload the, the Toyota logo so that when you turn it on, it, it looks factory. So a little bit of a guess there. We'll see how this goes. Okay, a couple things. I got this GPS antenna cable routed behind here and there's a spot above the vent. I peeled the little uh, adhesive off there. I'm gonna stick that up right underneath the dash there. And then I have this cable coming out and that will go into the GPS in here, plugs in and twists. Also, I'm gonna install the Wi-Fi connection too. I don't know if we'll use it, but um, I feel like I can route the cable right along here um, and hide it and then stick it up underneath here and it won't be seen at all. So I figure I might as well do that too. So that comes down here. And I have that cable routed up behind here and into this box. And then I'll put that right here on the 4G cable. So we'll put that on. So I've got the uh, 4G Wi-Fi and the GPS antenna. Again, not 100% sure I'm gonna need those, but I have a neat way to run the cables and I can hide the devices out of sight, so might as well use them. Okay, now let's figure out how the rest of these cables go in here. I did recognize this gray plug right here does match the USB plug on the Vibex unit, so I'm gonna get that plugged in. Okay, this kind of looks like a mess, but I think I got everything connected. This plug right here from the car doesn't seem to have a place. This particular antenna plug doesn't seem to have a place as well as this one. So I guess um, I do have this particular plug plugged into here, which comes over to the radio antenna. So clearly the, the FM radio antenna is connected to the car. I'm guessing one of these is for Sirius Satellite XM. Uh, radio or something like that, which um, we're not going to be using, so I'm not too concerned. Um, looks like everything else is connected. One thing, it looks like there's a, there's a couple of different places where the backup camera could be installed. And so once I matched all the plugs up, I traced the wire that actually goes to a plug right here. And actually there's a yellow wire that corresponds. And so I'm using this back camera video in plug that the one that's connected to the car from the wiring harness that came with the Viabex. So what we're going to do now, I got everything ran in. I also ran that USB, extra USB cable along down here and have that coming out here. I will say that the built-in microphone in the unit is not ideal and so you're going to want to install the provided microphone. Basically you have to pop the trim piece around the dash gauges out and then the little weather stripping that is on the frame of the driver's door jam you pop that down and then basically you can feed the line all the way up 
to the top of the windshield on the driver's side and mount it up there and it works pretty good. Now I will note that the 10 millimeter bolts don't hold this in anymore. I am gonna put them back into the car just to retain them in case we ever do decide to sell the car and put the factory radio back for any reason. But I still have the climate control clips here. Everything's tucked back. GPS antenna there. And then the uh, 4G Wi-Fi antenna is down here below. So let's give her a test. Okay, moment of truth. I guess we should take the uh, packaging off. First thing we want to do is get connected to Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm now connected to my Wi-Fi. Okay, we're getting there. I put the car in reverse and the factory camera is working, so I do have that installed properly. The stereo works with the FM radio and my steering wheel controls work, so we're getting there. Okay, a couple quick things on the setup. You got your Wi-Fi set up, then you need to go to settings and you go down to factory and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, confirm. Then you have to go up here to select your model. For the Toyota Highlander, you want simple, soft, Toyota all new Highlander. And you do that here, making sure that you've selected the all new Highlander. This you can scroll down here to make sure you've got all new Highlander and then it will update. Now I've already done that on here so I'm not gonna re-update it, but once I updated that, I was able to get this screen and then you have to go to Bluetooth first and you have to add your phone. I've already added my phone. Once you've added your phone, you go to the T-Link app here and then it will connect via Bluetooth to your device and then Apple CarPlay works via Bluetooth. I also tested the factory USB plug and my phone is charging with the factory USB. So I'm basically charging my phone with the factory USB and I'm playing the Apple CarPlay through my iPhone 15 Pro on the T-Link app on the device. It seems like everything's working. I'm making a test call to my wife. Hi, honey. Thanks for installing my new Apple CarPlay. Yeah, so it's, it's working. Like new car. I'm gonna put the dash back together and go. I'll take it for a spin. Sounds All right. great. All right. See ya. Thank you. Love you. Bye. So far, I think this is going to be a massive improvement to the Highlander. And I also noticed when I was testing the stereo that actually the stereo itself sounded way better. So far, I'm thrilled. It's a little bit cumbersome to get set up, but if you're patient and you're willing to follow the instructions, like I said, Viabex on the, the correspondence on Amazon was super helpful and excited to have an Apple CarPlay system in this car. It's a game changer. Okay, I got the dash put back together. First put the vents back in, then this little trim piece up here. That all clicked back in, remembering to plug in the two climate connector plugs on the back of there. Again, I've got a spare USB port here, and then my iPhone is plugged in to that cord there. Let's give this a shot. We're gonna start it up. Climate control system comes back on and we've got this screen that we're starting with let's go to the t-link it automatically reconnected it just took a second so that's great i'm a book on tape kind of guy I listen to audible and i got my book going got apple carplay looks like we're ready to roll 16 miles to the northwest of boone lake okay so i'm going for a ride with my wifey hi wifey and uh, we've had the uh, Viabex unit in the car for a few days now. I think I got everything kind of programmed out. I got the EQ set, so the sound sounds really good. Uh, we got my wife's phone all paired up. And uh, I guess now let's, you know, her opinion is the one that matters. So what do you what do you think so far? I love it. This is awesome because now not only do I have access to my music and my podcast, but also I have my navigation and it's right here on a big, huge screen instead of on my little bitty phone. So I am a huge fan. I love it, thanks so much. Yeah, we're always trying to do uh, projects and make memories as a family on a budget on the channel here. And it's nice to be able to buy an older or a used car and upgrade it with some of the uh, current modern features on it. So this, this unit's I think gonna work out pretty good. Once we got that microphone installed, the audio was majorly improved. People on the calls can hear us better. And uh, I think it's gonna work out really well. 
So uh, again, uh, put all the links to everything in the description below for where do you get all this stuff. Um, if you have any trouble installing this, uh, as I said, Vibex customer support has been top notch. They've been really helpful uh, through this whole process. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you're able to uh, upgrade your 2014 to 2019 Toyota Highlander with or without the JBL system. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's a great add to the car. And uh, man, now we won't have to get a new car for a while. Like and subscribe.